Good morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome to you for our time of worship together. And from our home to yours, a very, very, very warm greeting. I need to say up front that this is going to be a, a different service. Um, as many of you have heard during this week, Brenda's dad took a turn for the worst. We got a, hospital, a call from the hospital on Thursday morning saying that he had had an event of some kind. They suspected another brain bleed and things weren't looking good. They gave us um, uh, the prognosis that we probably just had a few hours left. And so we gathered around him as a family and have pretty much hovered around his bedside over the last 48 hours. And then completely unexpectedly and inexplicably, uh, with all four doctors scratching their heads, he rallied on Saturday morning. And it's left us with a very uncertain road ahead. Uh, because he's not out of trouble by any stretch of the imagination. His kidneys had stopped working and and now, slowly but surely, things seem to be turning. We're not quite sure which way this is going to go. And then on top of all of that, uh, I picked up food poisoning, probably from a, a meal that we had uh, during this crazy time, a takeaway meal. And uh, And so I've been absolutely as sick as a dog. And with one thing and another... It just hasn't been possible for me to record a full service. And after some thought and prayer, uh, I've looked at a service that we did back in July 2020. And and we're going to be using that service this morning. It's not what I like to do. I always try to give you my best. But this is one of those sets of circumstances where that's just been completely impossible. And so I do pray that you would understand and and uh, know, know my heart in all of this. The service is all about fellowship. And in the service, I talk about being under lockdown and all that kind of thing. And of course, the truth is that now we're not under lockdown anymore. But I think the message about fellowship is vitally important. And if we think about how much we were yearning for fellowship back then when we weren't allowed to, and now we are allowed to, and and yet uh, many of us have been slow, hesitant, maybe even frightened to get back to fellowship. And who knows, maybe this message is an important one for us to hear. I'm also very aware that there are many for whom getting back uh, into uh, into big public gatherings is not safe. And and so the idea of, of having to do church remotely is something that you're still grateful for and something that still serves a purpose. So this is not in any way meant to be a guilt trip, but just an opportunity for all of us to reevaluate the importance of fellowship, the importance of meeting together, and whether we can do that physically or whether we have to find other ways to do it. Maybe we once again all recommit ourselves to how important it is to stay in touch with one another and, and to look out for one another. I also just want to take a moment to thank you for your prayers for us as a family, um, for Brenda and her mom and her sister especially. Your prayers are so valued. This is such a trying and confusing time. And you can imagine the roller coaster of emotions. And so please do continue keeping the family in your prayers. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 133. How good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down the beard, running down Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life evermore.
Father God in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus to offer you our prayers of praise and adoration. Lord, you are worthy of our praise and worthy of our thanksgiving. You are the God of all comfort and the Father of all compassion. You're the God of grace and mercy and love. You're the God of hope and restoration, the God of new beginnings. You created and all of the heavens shone and sang with your glory. And you redeemed us and the angels sang your praises. Lord, you are worthy of all honor and majesty and glory and might. To you, Lord, belong all the praise. To you belong all our songs of thanksgiving. And to you be all the glory. But Lord, we must confess that in our thoughts, words and actions, we have so often failed you. We failed you by being selfish and self-centered and mean and arrogant. But we've also failed you by being lazy and thoughtless and by the things that we have neglected when we could have paid attention. Forgive us, O oh Lord. And thank you that through the blood shed on the cross, through what Jesus did for us, we are forgiven and we are made new. Thank you that because of your blood shed, we have a new beginning in Christ. Our sins are forgiven and we are made free. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing love. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace. Amen. boys and girls it's Friday night and it's been a busy week and so we, we decided to relax we've got a, a couple of chops and a little bit of water to put on the fire and uh, we're going to have a braai but while I was braaiing I thought of something that that I heard a long time ago and I want to show you it's really quite cool and it's and it fits in with what I'm going to say to moms and dads but in order for me to show you I'm going to have to turn off the lights so boys and girls, you can see I've got a beautiful fire going here and some lovely hot red hot coals. And I'm going to take one of these hot ones right from the middle. Look how beautifully red and hot it is. And if I just put it to one side over there, watch what happens to it. And so you can see pretty soon that heat fades out of the coal. But if I were to put it back into the fire, it doesn't take long. And pretty soon it's going to be red, red hot again. You can actually see the color coming back into it.
and watch what happens when I take this one that's been on the side and I put it here in the middle very soon they warm up and get hot 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 okay boys and girls so we're very much as Christians like like these coals when we're together in the fire we burn hot but if you put us to one side we lose our fire we lose our courage we lose our faith you see as Christians we encourage one another we support each other we pray for each other and when we don't get together then then we we, go, we grow cold our hearts grow cold you might be saying to me but how can we get together during these COVID times and when we're supposed to be on quarantine and we're not allowed to meet together well we have to be creative and that's why I'm coming to you on YouTube because we've had to make a plan and a couple of friends we play Scrabble uh, online and, and then uh, and then we send each other messages and say how are you doing we're using WhatsApp we're using phone calls we're writing notes to one another but we've got to be creative we've got to stay connected we've got to be the family of God saying how are you doing how's your heart so that we don't grow cold but that we stay burning bright for Jesus let's pray Lord Jesus we want our light to shine for you and that means that we need to stay together and stay in touch with each other to care for each other and Lord we can do that one-on-one -on -one and in our groups and I pray that you help us to do that help us to let our light shine brightly for you by being God's family by being your family together help us Lord to pray for each other to care for each other so that we can shine bright for you Amen Our scripture reading is from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians and you can read about the founding of the church in Thessalonica in Acts 17 it's quite exciting reading because the church didn't have an easy start Paul goes there he begins to preach and very quickly some troublemakers who are threatened by the gospel stir up a riot that is so bad that they whisk Paul out of the city and some of the, the local believers, brand new Christians, are placed under tremendous pressure. And this is the start of the church in Thessalonica. Paul then goes on to Berea. And some of the troublemakers who were in Thessalonica follow and cause more trouble for Paul. And he has to flee again. And eventually, Paul goes to Athens and ultimately to Corinth. But while he's in Athens, Paul has the Thessalonians on his heart and his mind. He's worried about them. And so he sends Timothy back to go and see how they're doing. And Timothy gets to go and see the Thessalonians. And he comes back. He catches up with Paul ultimately in Corinth. And he's able to give Paul the beautiful feedback that 
that the Thessalonians are of good heart and are doing well. And Paul writes this letter to them. And, and in, the, in the letter, he, he recounts this series of events, how he was worried about them and he wrote to them, sent Timothy to them, and Timothy came back to them. And as he re- goes over that again, I'd love you to listen to, to a couple of things that crop up in this passage. And the first is how Paul wanted to strengthen and encourage them, to strengthen and encourage them. How Paul is concerned about the dangers of hardship. How Paul is overjoyed at their progress and their affection for him. And finally, how Paul himself is encouraged through the contact that he's had via Timothy with the church in Thessalonica. And so let's listen to God's word. So when we could stand it no longer and we thought it best to be left by ourselves in Athens, we sent Timothy, who is our brother and God's fellow worker in spreading the gospel of Christ, to strengthen and encourage you in your faith, so that no one would be unsettled by these trials. You know quite well that we were destined for them. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that we would be persecuted. And it turned out that way, as you well know. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. I was afraid that in some way the tempter might have tempted you, and our efforts might have been useless. But Timothy has just now come to us from you, and has brought good news about your faith and love. He has told us that you always have pleasant memories of us, and that you long to see us, just as we also long to see you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in all our distress and persecution, we will encourage about you because of your faith. For now we really live, since you are standing firm in the Lord. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts bring you praise and glory and honor, now and forevermore. Amen. I really love the end of verse 8, where Paul says, Now we really live, knowing that you are standing firm in the Lord. Isn't that an incredible thought? Here's Paul, the great Paul, who is so excited at the news of this little church in Thessalonica, that he hears that they're doing okay. And he says, Now we really live. Now we really live. But I think Paul really embodies what I was trying to say in my children's address. And the children's address really says it all. Fellowship is important. Our connection as Christians to one another is important and needs to be prioritized. Uh, You might say to yourself, that's pretty ironic, Theo, because right now churches are closed and, and fellowship's kind of difficult. But you know, when you think about the early church, fellowship wasn't easy for them. I mean, their main leaders were constantly on the move. Paul was an itinerant preacher moving from town to town and sometimes fleeing from one town to the next with his tail between his legs because people are chasing them or persecuting them. And later on, Paul, the great leader of the church, would be put in prison and he would be writing letters from prison. And yet... Fellowship was a priority for him, even though the church was tiny and scattered and persecuted. And even when they were in prison and under threat and when it was dangerous, life threatening, in fact, to be known as believers. Fellowship was a priority for them. And if I look at Paul, then fellowship for him was a priority, something that that he didn't want to cut any corners on. He, he saw it as a priority. He saw it as a, as a longing. He saw it as a blessing and something that he was incredibly creative about. And Paul will write, and, and we believe that, that his letter to the Thessalonians was the first of the letters that he wrote to the church. And so this is already 
Paul's first innovation. He has a young church. He's planted. He's worried about them. He sends Timothy to visit them. And then what does he do? He writes them a letter. The, Paul's letters would ultimately start being re read to different congregations and being spread around from house church to house church to house church. And the early church stayed alive by reading Paul's letters. When Paul was in prison, he found ways to connect with the church. And we have these beautiful moments in some of these letters where he says, see how big I write when I write with my own hand. Because we think that Paul's eyesight was getting bad and so he would dictate his letters and others would write. But to give it a personal touch, Paul would go and write the final conclusion in these letters in his own hand. Because Paul saw fellowship as something important and something to be creative about. Now, when I was a young Christian, uh, it was impressed on me that, that it was good to memorize Bible verses. And I think it is a good practice. But then you need to be sure that you get your memorization right. And one of the verses that I memorized incorrectly was Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. And the way I memorized it was, let us not give up the habit of meeting together as some are doing. But when you go and read the passage, that's not what the author says. The author says, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. And it struck me that that change of emphasis is actually quite important because getting into the habit of not connecting is an easy habit to fall into. It's much easier to fall out of fellowship than to get into it. And so the habit of not fellowshipping, not meeting together, is the danger that we have to watch out for. But what are the, the four key strengths of fellowship? Why is it that we as Christians need to be connecting to each other? If we look at this passage that Timothea and Francois have read for us, there are four clear truths that come to light. The first is, that fellowship is for our strengthening and our encouragement. Paul says, I sent Timothy to you. I sent him to strengthen you and to encourage you. Now, the two Greek words there are very helpful. The word for strengthening is sterizua, which can mean strengthen or shore up or buttress. And when you think of building terminology, this idea of putting a buttress against something Strengthen something. You've got an existing wall, but you buttress up against it. And fellowship is like a buttress. When we have fellow believers that stand alongside us, who come alongside us, then when things get tough, they buttress us. They, they make us stronger. Or the word encouragement that, that Paul uses is para kalewa. A para we know from parallel. And Kalewa is to call. And literally, Paul is saying, I sent Timothy to walk alongside you, para, and call you along to encourage you. So fellowship strengthens us and it encourages us. In Proverbs 27, 17, we read, As iron sharpens iron, one person sharpens another. The second thing that fellowship does is it protects us in tough times. And Paul makes a big deal of this. He says, I sent Timothy to remind you that tough times will come. And when they come, you mustn't be surprised and you mustn't be tempted. Because remember, you knew that tough times were going to come. And fellowship is incredibly important, especially when times are tough. And unfortunately, the sad thing for most of us is that the thing that we do when times get tough is that we crawl into our own shells. We hide away. We cocoon ourselves. When times get tough, we tend to cut ourselves off. And I don't know why that is. I, 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 whether it's that we feel like we're failing or, or, or what it is, but, but it's one of the strangest things that we do. When times get tough, instead of engaging, we withdraw. Paul sends Timothy 
He wants engagement. He wants connection. He wants to warn them and strengthen them. The third thing that fellowship does is that there is mutual inspiration that takes place. Timothy gets to Thessalonica and these brand new believers are doing so well that he's able to come back to Paul with a glowing report. And if you look at how Paul starts Thessalonians, he, he talks about how he's seen their hope and their faith and their love. And it's ringing out from them to the whole world. And they're brand new believers. And Paul says, I'm so encouraged. So encouraged by, by what I'm hearing about you. And by the same token, they were overjoyed to hear about Paul and to hear that Paul is also standing firm for the gospel. And this mutual encouragement is such a powerful thing. Makes such a difference in their lives. We can be inspired. We can learn from one another's examples. I had a good Christian friend during my varsity years. And one day she, and I was jealous of her. She had an incredible relationship with the Lord. And it just seemed that she could hear the Lord whisper and she was so sensitive to what the Lord was doing. And and I, so I was surprised and amazed when one day she came to me and said, Theo, I have a confession to make. I'm so jealous of you and your relationship with the Lord. And I backed out laughing. I said, well, I could have said the same thing about you. And that's one of the things when when we connect with fellow Christians, Christians who shine brightly, then it's like those coals that get put next to each other. They warm each other up and we shine more brightly. The fourth and final thing about fellowship is that when we experience good fellowship, it really does strengthen us and renew us and and cause a vitality of life in us. And like Paul says, now we really love. When you've had a good conversation with a fellow Christian, when you've been able to talk with somebody who shares your faith, who shares your passion, it really does just make your faith so much more alive and 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 applicable and it just brings about such an encouragement in your spiritual walk and it's my prayer that we will learn the value of fellowship we can be strengthened and encouraged it protects us during tough times we can be inspired by the growth of others and ultimately we can be encouraged in our journey forward with the Lord. It brings joy to our journey. Now let me conclude. On Trinity Sunday we talked about how God is a community, a, 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 a family that within the Father, Son and Spirit there is fellowship that there is community and we're created in the image of God and because we're created in the image of God we're also created for community we are not created to be lone ranger Christians that him you in your small corner and I in mine is simply not true we are called to be community together and so in these crazy times where we can't meet together physically, like Paul in the early church, we're going to need to be creative. We need to be creative about connecting to one another, about staying in touch with each other. Services of worship like this shouldn't be just a nice to have, but a priority. Our fellowship groups, whether we do them by Zoom or by WhatsApp video chats or um, we even have a fellowship group that does WhatsApp uh, texting. And for an hour, there are 40 of us who text backwards and forwards and we share scripture together. And it renews us and strengthens us. We picture each other and, and we come out of that time strengthened in our faith. 
it's important that we phone one another, that we send encouraging notes. If you hear of somebody that's going through a tough time, drop them a message and say, I'm praying for you. Now more than ever, we need to lean into community. And folk, the storm is coming for, for, for our part of the world. If we look at the statistics for Gauteng, pretty soon, some of us might even have to face a bout of COVID-19. And we're going to need one another. We're going to need our prayers and our support. We're going to need to be there for one another. And so I want to urge you, be creative. Don't neglect the importance of Christian community. Do whatever you can to connect to fellow believers. It's vital. It's so easy for us to go into our cocoons. And I talked about that earlier. It's so easy when trouble comes to just go to, to, into, into our own little shelters and communities. Now is not the time to do that. Now is the time to radically connect. And so I urge you, reach out, connect, be the family of God. We are going to need each other. Let's pray. Father, you gave us a great gift when you gave us the church. And you gave us the community of believers so that we can strengthen each other encourage each other, that we can be lifted up by each other, that, that our faith can inspire others and we can be inspired by people's examples. And ultimately that our faith comes alive to us, that we can live as we experience the warmth and, and connectedness of the God community. As my prayer, Lord, that even though we, we don't have community easily, that we, like the early church, would be creative in the ways that we connect to one another. And help us, Lord, to connect, to grow, and to shine. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
While we don't have a physical offering bag we can pass around, we do have the opportunity, however, to offer something more important than just our treasures. We have the opportunity to offer our lives as an act of worship. So let's join together as we pray. Father of love, thank you that you are our strength and song. Thank you that you fill our hearts with joy and gladness. We know that everything is from you, and so we offer ourselves as an act of worship to you. May our offered lives grow into fruitful trees of life, growing your kingdom here on earth. May we be filled and in turn offer all your fullness and goodness to this world. In Jesus' name, Amen. We come now to the Lord's table, and uh, as we did last, uh, at the beginning of last month, I invite you to have your bread and your wine ready. And when I come to the part of the service where I lift up the bread and break it, I would ask you to do the same. And when I lift up the cup, I would ask you to do the same. And then, once the bread has been circulated, please don't eat straight away, but wait until the last person has got bread, and then, and then we'll all take bread together. And the same with drinking from from the cup, and so that we we share in communion together in that way. Jesus invites us to this table, saying, "Come, those who are weary and burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light." And you'll find rest for your souls. Our Lord is the Lord who sleeps in the boat because He knows that while we are with Him, we are safe. And He will calm the storms in our hearts even as He calmed the storm on that lake. And as we come to this table, we come to Him. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we gather in your name, as we gather in your presence, as we come to your table, we come with gratitude and thanksgiving. Not only did you create us, not only did you give us beautiful freedom and a beautiful world to live in, but when we exercised our free will to turn against you, you didn't give up on us. Instead, you sent your son and came into our world. He died on the cross in our place, Lord Jesus, that we might be forgiven. You rose from the dead, that we might have eternal life. And in this meal, Lord, we contemplate your sacrifice and your goodness. And with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying together, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, not as we ought, but only as we are able do we give you thanks for your body broken for us and your blood shed for us. And we ask now, Holy Spirit, that you would sanctify us and these gifts of bread and wine in every home. That the bread that we break would be to us the communion of the body of Christ. The cup of blessing that we bless may it be to us the communion of the blood of Christ. That as we eat and drink, we may partake in your body and blood to our spiritual benefit and our growth in grace, now and forevermore. Amen. We pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. Amen. And so according to the example and command of our Lord Jesus Christ and in remembrance of him, we do this who on the night that he was betrayed took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Drink of it, all of you in remembrance of me. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you are the Redeemer of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, as you take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. The body of Christ was broken for you and me. Take and eat in remembrance of him. Please take the bread, break, and pass it around all those that are present. Let's eat together. The body of Christ was broken for me. Now, if you could make sure that every person has the grape juice, take and drink. The blood of Christ was shed for each one of us. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you bringing our prayers of thanks and intercession. And Lord, we want to thank you for your grace and your strength that has been with us in the week that has passed. Lord, you have been with us, you have carried us, you have provided for us. You've given us strength when we've needed it, grace where we've needed it, courage where we've needed it. You've sent the right people along our path and given us the encouragement that we have needed or the direction that we've needed. Lord, you've sustained us and shown us your way. And we thank you for your grace. And we thank you for your love. Lord, we take time now to bring our prayers to you as we pray for those that are in need. We pray particularly, Lord, for those who've been so adversely affected by the rain over the last couple of days. We pray, Lord, for our country and the many challenges that we face. We pray, Father, for those that are in hospital, those that are in your waiting room, those that are frail. We pray for those undergoing long-term illness and long-term treatments, and we pray for courage and strength. We pray, Father, for those that are exhausted, who are discouraged, who are on the verge of surrender, and we pray that you would be with them and help them and carry them. Finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves, asking you to be with us. Give us strength and guidance and wisdom. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
I hope that even though this is a service from a year and a half ago, that the Holy Spirit in some way has made it meaningful and useful to you. And I pray that this time of fellowship has been a blessing to you. And I pray that there have been some truths that you've been able to hold on to that will walk you through this time. And so go into this weekend and maybe today there is somebody that the Lord places on your mind. Somebody who may need an encouraging phone call, a friendly voice, a word of encouragement, or maybe even something practical that will help them. And I want to urge you, if you get a nudge, if you have a prompting, if there's somebody that you need to reach out to, why not do it? Take that leap of faith, step out and do what needs to be done. You just never know. It may make the world of difference for a brother or a sister in Christ. And so go into this week. Love and serve the Lord. Love and serve his people. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Spirit be with us and remain with us, now and forevermore. Amen. For Pretoria North, Monday the 7th, we are celebrating Violet B and Tsekhofazo L. And here are the birthdays for Emmanuel and Grace. Today is Christella. On Monday the 7th is Lynn. Tuesday, Monique. Thursday, Kim. Friday is Clayton, as well as Alexi, who will be turning 13. On Saturday is Jayshri. The anniversaries for this week, Tuesday is Trixie and Dedrick who will be married for 36 years. On Thursday is Miriam and Fawcett who will be married for 30 years, as well as Sally and Colin who will be married for 33 years. Let's pray for these folks. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for these children of God who are part of our church family. May they continue to grow closer to you and to realize their purpose and plan you have for their lives. Please be with them and their families on their special days this week. Thank you, Lord. Amen.